when backed by science becomes, well, pretty much, in my opinion, it becomes backed by bullshit. I think that's the dilemma that we're currently facing, particularly within the fitness industry, but I'm seeing this outside as well too. Now, what do I mean? Well, I've got some notes here today. I've got my glasses in case I can't read. So, sit in, strap yourself in, I should say, and just follow along. Here's what I mean, backed by science. You'll see it, people using reports from PubMed or this journal or that medical journal, and you can just Google and go and find them anywhere to substantiate their view of something and therefore say that, see, the science says, and therefore you should do what I think that you should do, and it's typically aligned with some product that they're selling, some supplements or whatever. And I'm going to go to town on a couple of them, and, and here's why. Some of them are so-called backed by science, but I think we're missing the boat. You see, backed by your own inspection, your own experience, your own doing, I think goes a far way further along than backed by science. Now, case in point, first one, number one. There's this diet out there. I'm going to call it a diet because that's pretty much how it's being branded by a doctor. And it's called the Fast 800. And what does that mean? Well, simply means it's talking about weight loss. And it's a fast way to achieve weight loss by only consuming 800 calories in a day. Now, they do have a caveat anywhere between 2 days and 12 weeks, no more than that. The problem I have with it and why I'm calling bullshit on it is this. Go to any calculator for TDEE, Total Daily Energy Expenditure. Key in the details for a 13, 14, 15 year old girl who's fairly sedentary. And you will find it will turn back and it will give you some results saying that the energy expenditure for that little thing to keep themselves alive and functioning fully is significantly more than 800 fucking calories a day. Seriously. So this pe the, these people are advocating to get on with 800 calories a day. Now again, caveat, for a short period of time. They're also saying that you should intermittently fast. And they use some other fancy term like Weight Watchers here saying intermittently eating. Simply put, it is restrict your mouth from chewing down on food that you would normally do if you were in control of the shit that you were eating for a period of time throughout the day. So therefore what happens, people say, intermittent fasting got me this. No, intermittent fasting didn't get you that. Not eating like an asshole got you that. This fast 800, 800 calories a day? You're going to lose weight, seriously, because if you've gone from eating three, four, five thousand 5,000 calories a day and doing jack all to only 800 calories a day, then your body is going to do what the page says it's going to do. It's going to go to the fat stores because clearly you are not feeding it fucking well enough for you to go and consume and have enough energy throughout the day. You ain't going to have a pep in your step no matter what they tell you. Because people do say that intermittent fasting makes them feel better and sharper. That's correct. Because I'm not putting shit in my mouth. Therefore, to then for my brain to then go, fuck, I've got to deal with this. I don't care if it's a fast 800 or the same dude has his 5-2 diet. You work out who he is. If you cannot work it out for yourself that you should do a couple of things. One, control what you eat. If the food that you eat makes you fart like a trooper, makes you shit like a hippo, gives your stomach grumbling, or within half an hour or an hour after eating, you feel like you need to go have a Bex and a lie down, then that food is probably not good for you. It is not the fact that it is a carbohydrate, it's a protein or it's a fat, none of that shit. It just means that that food in your gut doesn't work well together. So, Maybe backed by science and all these leaders and researchers and saying these are the foods that you should eat. I find that there are some foods on that list that I can't eat because they do to me what I just said it might do to you. So backed by science, I'm calling bullshit. Maybe backed by trying it, having a go and seeing how it works is maybe what you should do too. 
Intermittent fasting, intermittent eating, at the end of the day, it is time restriction on the amount of times that you can put food into your pie hole. And the problem with that is it works so good for a while, but after a while you become hangry as we call it, and you end up just trying to over consume an amount of calories in a shorter window because you've got no impulse control. Another one is grip strength is a sign that is reflective of mortality. I've read all the research, I've seen it all, I went through four papers this morning. It doesn't exactly tell me that when I go to my hand dynamometer and I squeeze it, that at 54 it's going to tell me I'm going to last longer. It just means I've got fucking strong grip strength. And it also is reflective of the fact that, no, I'm not sedentary, I don't sit in my fucking ass, and I get out, and I walk the dogs, and I lift weights, and I want to carry my groceries in to the house in one haul. Those research papers, when they do that, yeah, they're looking at an older population. Primarily those who do either fuck all, and sit down and do nothing, and live sedentary lives, but the odd outlier that's out there that continues to do a bit of work, has a bit of a sport, likes to go and shoot hoops, or do whatever, is typically a little bit stronger, and in the majority of cases, they may well live a little bit longer. So you telling me that my grip strength is an indicator of how long I'm going to live, I'm going to call bullshit. Because here's the kicker. I might get 50, 60, 70 on that dynamometer in one hand. But yet when I put both my hands together, I can deadlift a shit ton more than my left and my right hand combined. How does that play in? Maybe we're starting to become a little bit more backed by bullshit. Now, let's just finish off the video this way. Here's another bullshit. The best exercise for X. The best exercise for X is the fucking exercise that you're going to do. End of story. It sheds fat faster. I see this for guys. I see this for adverts on YouTube. Some guy in a doctor's coat because it makes him look like he's smart like me putting my fucking glasses on. Problem is I need these otherwise I'm blind. There is no set of exercises that sheds fat faster, melts fat, tortures calories, tones. Your muscles don't make music. You either maintain the muscle mass, you grow the muscle mass, you lose the muscle mass. They don't play a tune. Working out faster versus work... Oh, mate. Cardio faster. You get my drift. Abs are made in the kitchen. I love that one. No, they're fucking not. You have abdominals. They're like any other muscle. You will train them. And when you train them, in case in point with me... I train by simply putting on a heavy goddamn ruck during that period of locking down people and I walked everywhere for a long period of time and I built up a solid trunk, lower back, upper back. Do I have visible abs? No. But I can guarantee you that I am a shitload stronger through my trunk than some of these guys with six packs simply because they like to control their calories and therefore look at the washboard abs. They're not made in the fucking kitchen. They're made by doing the work like every other muscle. You will see them being exposed when you take the shrink wrap off and cut down on the diet and the calories. The just copy me, it looks good for me. And worse still, the body positivity from a person who is clearly morbidly obese. Now there's a lady who's in the media at the moment for getting slammed for it left, right and centre because she's been bossed with positivity and now allegedly she's berating the shit out of her staff. Well, go figure. But there is nothing positive about being morbidly obese. There is nothing positive about living a lifestyle where clearly you are not going to live longer than the average Joe. There is no positivity about the fact that you can't bend over, touch your toes, see your shoelaces, get up from the toilet without needing a handrail. Or if you fall over that you can't get up because you've broken your goddamn hip. There is nothing positive about that. Any way, shape or form. But, there's a good side. There are no shortcuts you got to do the damn work. You should do some resistance training. 
my way of lifting weights, the F45, the BFT, whilst I don't agree with what they do, if that's what you do, good on you. But you need to do some form of resistance because building muscle means improving my bone density, means helping my ticker get a bit of a workout too. Yes, cardio from weights, go figure who to think. And that, that way then whenever I do fall over, and I've happened to do this a few times these last couple of nights going out of a car at night, when I do face plant, I get the fuck up, I push myself up, and I go, shit you dick. But don't also wreck yourself. The workout doesn't need to leave you heaving in a heap or completely shagged and screwed the following day that you can't walk. You should come out of the workout feeling good about yourself. Yeah, there are times when you go and you push yourself because I believe in doing that also too. But that I'm not doing it for my body, I'm doing it for this guy up here to see can I push through the hard shit. And some days I wake up the following morning and go, oh yeah, yeah, walks like a duck, looks like a duck. The only problem is I ain't quacking. But you don't need to F yourself up. It's also a long game. The results won't come in 28 days. You might lose 4 kilos in 28 days. Good on you, you've lost 4 kilos probably of muscle. You probably haven't lost any body fat. So those pictures of the people at the gym holding the plate going, look what I did. They probably didn't even need to join the gym if they had just gone out and walked every day. Probably would have done the same thing too. Maybe the challenge is the environment that helped them flip the switch. It ain't the gym. It ain't the trainer. It ain't the workout. It ain't the diet. It is them. It's one of the reasons why I never post before and after photos of any person that I've worked with. I've only started showing some stuff of me. That's it. It's a long game. And there are no pills. There are no fucking potions. And there are no magic lotions. So when you see the back by science, question it. Has that person done it themselves? Simple. Ask the question. What is the best exercise for building quads? Back squat. What happens if you can't squat properly? Goblet squat. What happens if you can't goblet squat properly? Elevate the heels. Do a cyclist squat. At the end of the day, there is backed by science for any one of those variations. The thing is, it's what's the variation that works for you and the dogs barking at the neighbor's dogs next door. So when backed by science becomes backed by bullshit, just start to question it. The stuff that's been around for decades before scientific research reports were even made will continue to be around for more decades and I can do any form of scientific research if I control the controllables. I could prove that lettuce is the master vegetable if all I did was feed people fucking lettuce and then say, see they lost weight or see they did muscle or see they did this because all those other things that have gone into it but they still ate lettuce. Who cares? It's like this drink or that drink is better for carbohydrates. This drink, or this is the best flipping pre-workout. Yeah, the one that gets you beamed to the eyeballs and jacked and you're just ready. No, I'll have a short buck. And some days I just come in and go, flip the switch in the fucking head, do the work. Now, if you like any of this, please, like, subscribe, please, tell a friend. If you don't like that, then you can also say so. Whether I give a shit is probably a different thing too. But I'm a bit beyond the back by science, the bro science, the fitness industry fuckery, the mental masturbation that is going on to simply prove to you one thing. I don't do marketing well. I just call a spade a spade. The shit doesn't work. Try something different. Oh, sorry, I better go. My rented Lambo's out the front. That's it. Now, here's what I'm going to say. We're going to leave you with this. I know one thing that works for me. It's going for a walk. Those two dogs, we're about to go for our second walk for the day. And that leads me to something that I'll drop later on. We talk about the Fortune 500 as these big companies that do great things. But I want to talk to you about the fortune of the 500. What does that mean? Can I spin this into marketing bullshit for you and I to go and get fit? 500 hours, one year. Can you do it? Come and disappear.
next time.